So with that, uh, you know, hey everyone, my name again is Anurag, part of uh, Calyptia, and I'm joined here with Ed Eduardo. Uh, we are you know, the creators and maintainers of these projects, and we founded a company, Calyptia, around these projects. And we really concentrate on what we call first mile observability, where you're collecting all that data, you are uh, intrinsically doing things like parsing, enriching, redacting, and routing it to end destinations. Um, and with that journey, there's a ton of stuff that comes into play as we start evolving into microservices, we start evolving into high performance data streams, we start evolving uh, into data that just doesn't necessarily look like anything we've, we've dealt with before. Uh, and so in this session, we're gonna talk a little bit about that problem inherently, what it is, how to go and solve it. Uh, some workarounds you can use today, and of course, uh, some places where Calyptia can come in and help with, with what we've built. So with that, I'm gonna pass it off to Eduardo to talk a little bit about this. Thank you, Andre. So as I said, uh, we started this company called Calyptia to solve all these problems and challenges that from the open source perspective, yeah, we can address some of them, but when you go to the enterprise, there's even more problems. And to understand the problems, we need to understand uh, one is a pain and the other, how we are tackling that problem at a low level, technically speaking, from the implementation. And scalability is a continuous problem. We always have more data, more data, more data. On how do we optimize? Quick question is like, hey, they have more nodes, more clusters. But sometimes that adds other sites problem. Now, if we talk how things work, it's like we were talking about, we got data, which is called input, right? We process data, and when this said data, data out. But this is more complex than that. Internally, dealing with an input means to open files, perform a lot of syscall, create sockets, listeners, allocate, reallocate memory, free out that memory. And for metrics, also it's the same thing. So it's, it's a pretty complex uh, and tough job. After that, if you're in login, we need to parse this information, filter it out, serialize it, right? Because you're not going to deal with just text. You're going to have binary data. You have to deal with buffers. And as I said, we have physics limits, right? Memory is not uh, unlimited. And then when you process all this and filter this data out, you want to route it, create schedulers, and if this go wrong, you have to retry. So all of this complexity, so you say, okay, if I want to scale up all my data management, right, how do we solve this in the low level part? Because I cannot get rid of syscalls, I cannot get rid of memory handling, I have to do that. That is a continuous need. But also you have to deal with networking because if you're going to send the data out, we have these our best friends called DNS servers, right? DNS is always complex, DNS lookups, connect, and also you want security, right? We, want, we, we don't want to transfer the data in a plain way. We have to do TLS handshakes, round trips, certificates, format the data because also the destination will not understand our binary format, but, but Elastic will have its own JSON format, Splunk its own way to get that data, and that transformation or data also takes time. Right? We just scale up the services with some threads, some mechanisms, but at some point you need something else. And when delivering things also over the network, we have to validate, and that also takes time. So, if you think, how do, how do we scale up this? How will you tell the users? Hey, the user will tell you, hey, I got this problem. I cannot scale up. Uh, I have terabytes of data. As a pre maintainers and uh, I'm putting my OSS hat, I cannot tell them, hey, take a look at the syslog, take a look at the memory buffers. That won't scale right, as a solution in a business. They need to have something differently ready to go that can adapt, it can approach and tackle the problem in a, in a different way. So as OSS maintainers, eh, you got this problem, right? That goes from left to right, from data collection standpoint, processing, filtering, buffering, with the final destination, which is your database or your cloud service. And this is, eh, as a company, we come up with this concept of the first mile observability. You have a huge pipeline, right? But we are experts on the first fraction of it. 
So, and we said, let's try to provide some solution on that part, right? Let's stop talking about Cisco, Cisco. let's stop talking about memory allocations, and let's bring things to a higher level for the enterprise, where you likely where you have thousands of servers, right? You want to have something that you can put in your architecture and work and scale right away. Admiral? And so our expertise here is really in a lot of the cloud native pieces, and we thought, how would we go architect something like this uh, from an open source? How have folks gone and solved this today? And the first is you have all of this data flowing, and you might need multiple processes, instances, to go in uh, and take care of that. So you might need multiple containers, right? If someone's running in Kubernetes, you might want five or six different uh, containers that are reading that data, processing it, and sending it. Uh, you might want automatic load and traffic balancing. We have this great idea of ingress routes within Kubernetes. It can take in data, load balance it automatically for you, uh, and, and it's something powerful kind of comes out of the box with, with many Kubernetes distributions. And then you want simple scalability, right? You, the idea with Kubernetes is you can treat these workloads uh, somewhat as ephemeral, and you can scale them up, you can scale them down, um, and, and you can go and configure it, say, from a remote or API type location. So this is where we said, how can we solve these using what's available today? And uh, for us, we thought of the operator. We have the FluentBit operator. There's a session on that later today. Uh, there's ways that you can do this, just running this on top of Kubernetes. Uh, and then as Calyptia, we wanted to package and bundle all of that uh, as well. So we created a new product called Calyptia Axle and essentially takes the Fluent as a service but allows you to deploy it within your data center, have it remotely managed and configurable. We give you some automatic monitoring about how things are flowing through, how many events per second, bytes per second, are you meeting the throughput needs. Uh, we can scale up, scale down, leverage that rich ecosystem that already exists within Kubernetes scaling and auto-scaling. Uh, and then also just make sure, right, if you're going to be doing this from an enterprise perspective, manage this across clouds, data centers, or, or different environments. Uh, and so this is something that we, we've gone ahead and developed. And if I just go ahead and switch over to, say, this, um, this UI, we can do some very simple things where we take in a configuration that we're so used to on deploying on thousands of nodes. And if we want to go ahead and scale, say, this specific pipeline, maybe we're doing some security logging, maybe we're doing some syslog logging, we can just increase, say, the replica size. Um, and then we can go ahead and save that. And just like we would expect with any of these cloud-native architectures, how we go and update and how controllers work where it goes, looks at the new configuration and starts to apply it, we can come back and see, OK, we have you know, a brand new replica size that matches uh, what we specified. So this is our, our way of saying, hey, there's all these problems with scalability. We can solve them using a lot of the cloud native architecture that exists out there. It's a lot of manual putting together. Uh, and if you want something more turnkey, uh, we have a product that um, can do that. And of course, we're looking for folks who are interested in uh, trying that out and, and building that vision with us. So yeah, thank you all for for the time, we're going to go ahead and uh, break for the uh, coffee break now. Uh, and then we will come back to this session here at uh, about 10, 15, 10, 20. So we'll get that 30 minutes of coffee in for us. So yeah, we'll be up here if, if there's any questions. Uh, otherwise, we'll also be in the Slack uh, where folks are adding, asking questions and comments. Uh, but other, other than that, yeah, please have a good coffee break and see you soon.